I'm Kathleen McGrath and in this presentation you're going to learn how to create a Windows application using Visual Basic Express. The best way to learn Visual Basic programming is to actually create a program. A good first program is a web browsing application that can display web pages. I'll show you how to create this application in five easy steps. The first step is to create a project in Visual Basic. When you start Visual Basic 2008 Express Edition, you'll see the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. To create a project, click File, then New Project, and in the New Project dialog box, select Windows Application. Since this is the first application you're creating, it automatically names it Windows Application 1. Click OK and it will create your project. Notice it created a form called Form 1 in an area of the IDE known as the Form Designer. And all of the required files are located in an area of the IDE called Solution Explorer. Now this is all that was needed to create a project in Visual Basic. Next, you'll create the user interface of your application. To add controls to your application, you can drag the controls from the toolbox. In my IDE, the toolbox is hidden, so I'll point to the toolbox tab on the sidebar to open it, and then I'll pin it into place so that it's easier to use. If for some reason the toolbox is not visible at all, not even on the sidebar, click the View menu, and then click Toolbox, and it will open. Notice that you can open other windows from this menu, such as Solution Explorer and the Properties window. I'll click the All Windows Forms tab to see a list of all of the Windows form controls that are available to me. Currently I have them in alphabetical order, but if for some reason yours are not in alphabetical order, you can right click and then select Sort Items Alphabetically. I'll scroll down and click a panel control and drag it to the upper left hand corner of my form. I'll use the panel control to hold my user input controls in a defined area that is separate from the web browser that I want to have in the lower part of the form. Now I'll get a text box control and place it directly on top of the panel control. Now I'll drag a button onto the panel and I can move the button by clicking it and then dragging it to a new area and releasing the mouse button. Finally, I'll drag a web browser control and put it below the panel. It doesn't look very good now, but in the next step, you'll learn how to customize the look and behavior of your application. To set the properties of your controls, you can select the control on the Forms Designer. I'll select the Panel Control. Notice that the Properties window of the IDE lists all of the properties for the selected control, such as the size or visible property. I want to set the position by using the dock property. So I'll select dock and then I'm going to click this drop down arrow and it gives me the option to dock the control to the top, left, right, or bottom or I can fill all of the available space. I'm going to choose top and notice that the panel control is docked to the top of the form and it expands to the entire width of my form. To change its size I'll set the height property to 50. Next, I'll select the web browser control and set its dock property to fill by clicking the center box. This will cause the web browser control to resize automatically if I resize the form. Since this application is going to be a web browser, I want it to be a little bit larger than the default form size. So I'm going to select the form, notice the sizing handles, and I'm going to click this corner sizing handle and just drag it down to resize the form. Next, I'll select the button and then I'm going to set its text property by typing go with an exclamation mark. When I press the enter key, notice that it changed the name on the button. Next, I'll select the text box and then I'm going to select one of the sizing handles and drag it to the right so that it can accommodate a long website URL if I type one in. Now it looks the way I want it to, but it doesn't do anything. In the next step, you'll learn how to make the browser work by adding some Visual Basic code to your application. In this step, I'll show you how you can add some instructions for how the program should work. You add these instructions by adding Visual Basic code to your application. 
In the form designer, I'll double click the button control and it will open up a new window called the code editor. Now notice that there is already some code here and the cursor is between these two lines. The top one says private sub button one underscore click and then there's some variables in parentheses and the bottom one says n sub. Most of the code you write will be inside sub procedures like this one. These procedures react to or handle events in this case clicking the button as the name implies. So whenever a user clicks button one the code that you type in this area will run. To add the code that makes the web browser read a URL from the text box and then display the web page, I'll type in Web Browser 1, that's the name of the web browser that we added. I'll type a period or dot, and then type Navigate. I'll add a parenthesis and then type Text Box 1, this is the name given to the text box we added on the form, dot text, and then end parentheses. Now if you don't understand what this code means, don't worry too much about it right now. You're going to learn a lot more about writing code in later lessons. In this final step, I'll show you how to run and test your program. Before you start, you want to make sure that your computer is connected to the internet so that you can actually get to a website. To test the browser, you can click the debug menu and then click start debugging. Visual Basic Express starts running your program. It's called debugging because if there are bugs in your program, you get messages that pop up and tell you more or less what's wrong. When the application runs, you'll see Form 1 open in front of your Visual Basic Express Designer. Now you can type a URL into this text box and then click the Go button. So I'll go ahead and type in http colon slash slash www.microsoft.com and then I'll click Go. Notice that it opens up the Microsoft.com main web page. And I can expand this application if I want to see more of the web page. Now to close the application, I'll click the X in the upper right hand corner. This concludes the Visual Basic guided tour for creating your first Visual Basic program. This video shows the results of five help topics that are in the section called Creating Your First Visual Basic Program. You can learn more about creating applications in Visual Basic in the Visual Basic Guided Tour and in the Beginner Developer Learning Center.